G'day, I'm Alan, and I uh, thought I'd talk a little bit about how I purchased my farm and what I look for, and um, give you some ideas on what you might look for. First of all, I started off um, going to a funeral and talking to my cousin, and he'd had a hobby farm and built a house, and then he was on his second hobby farm, and he'd built a house, so I said, well, what sort of things do I need to look for when I'm buying a block of land? And he said, well, the first thing you need to make sure is that decide if you're going to be on the grid or off the grid for electricity, because electricity costs so much to connect up. And uh, so that was good advice, and I started off by going out into the country and looking for a circle. Uh, um, I picked a radius of 200 kilometres around Perth. That's about two hours' drive. So let's start there. Well, here's the 200 circle. I use a circle measure which I downloaded from the internet, put it into Google Earth, and there's my 200 radius. And uh, I started looking at the prices of land. I pretty much looked at every farm within that area that was under $150,000. And I found the most expensive ones are right here at Bullsbrook, uh, around that area, where you're paying $50 a square metre for land. And uh, that's quite expensive. But um, after, other than that, you start off at this coastline here. This is the most expensive strip down here. And as you move around the radius, it gets cheaper and cheaper. And when you get up to Del Wallanew and up that area, it gets very, very much cheaper. Um, this land here is really poor soil. Um, that's the Darling Scarp running down there, and that's the longest fault scarp in the world. West of there, the ground is very sandy and not very good for farming. Um, dams don't hold water, things like that. Um, the most expensive land was around here. Down at Darkin, where I started off my teaching many years ago, down here, um, the land is around about $1,000 an acre. Uh, so that works out to about a dollar a square metre, something like that. So it's expensive there, probably 2 or $3 a square metre. You come around to here and you get up to Del Wallanew and you get up to there, very low rainfall, about 300 millimetres a year, and you can get land for about $0.10 cents a square metre. So that's quite cheap. But it's not going to be a great farm. It's going to be very dry and uh, things like that. So I started looking <laughs> around dark because I knew the area. And I looked at an area of Bokal. And uh, I spotted the farm I'm actually at now at Allenvale, and that was at 150,000. And no, it was more than that. I think it was 300,000 when it came on the market in about 2012, and it dropped down very, very quickly. I also looked at Bogle over here, um, but the area was sandy. The price was good, but I thought, well, oh, Melaleuca trees, if you look at it from the road, Melaleuca and white sandy soil things, and uh, Low lying, probably a little bit waterlogged in some years. I thought, no, nah, it's probably not a good prospect. But then the price came down on, on Allen Vale and uh, it went down to 150000 Then it went down to 130000 and I offered 120000 for it. So I got it for around about uh, $1,000 um, an acre and uh, about a dollar a square metre. So that was a good price for that. And uh, that was about four times what you'd pay for a genuine farm in that area. But because it's a smaller lot, the land's more expensive. Close to town, um, you'd probably pay the same amount, $120,000 for five acres of land next to town. But I'm 10 kilometres out and I've got a really good price. And it's probably the only hobby farm of its size in the West Arthur Shire. Sometimes you're lucky with power. Um, we've got a spur line here running through to a house on the top of the hill. Uh, all we had to do was put in a new post, transformer at the top, and a green dome. From there the meter box has to be close by, and then we run the power underground up to the house and the shed. This was all done during subdivision. 
and it cost sixteen thousand dollars for the post the transformer and the green dome uh, one neighbor near darken had three posts put in and a new spur line that cost him seventy five thousand dollars so you want to be very sure about power and sort all that out before you buy your block we've got some sheep in the paddock today cleaning up the last of the weed before the seeding had a little bit of rain the other day so seeding might go ahead pretty soon we'll see how we go uh, another thing you need to watch for when you're buying a block is your topsoil you need to have a good soil i've got a stockpile here that i've saved from when I built my house I cleaned out underneath the sheep have been all over it and cleaned all the weed off good soil there nice and friable and it's about 100 millimeters of topsoil on this land so you have to be careful not to plow too deep or you just get gravel you can see the gravel there I've got a stockpile of gravel just up the hill there from when I did the leech trains and that's going to go into a silt trap on the top of the dam Another thing you think about is rocks. You can see we've got a lot of loose little rocks here. Um, this is not going to stop ploughing. But we, every now and then we do go through the paddock, clean up the larger ones. Seeding does turn a few up each year. We've saved a few here. They're going to go into a gabion wall that's going to be built along the front here. So rocks can be managed if you're careful. Of course another issue is water. Uh, my neighbour said to me when I got in here, you can't have enough water, you can always have some more. I've got two 25,000 litre tanks, and the sheep are all watching me now. Um, the dam was pretty low so I did put a water trough out for them. And uh, they're my neighbour's sheep and they just come in to do a bit of a clean up before seeding. Yeah, run away, run away. Yeah. And as you can see, not a lot of water in the dam. Let's just see what we got the other day. Had a bit of rain yesterday. Ten millimetres. That's not bad, that'll go in the record book. And I've put a little clamp around the top here. Uh, it blew away across the paddock a few times before I worked that one out. So that's the water supply. There's a silt trap here to stop the sheep poo going into the dam. Catches a little bit of that. I'm still working on that and I'm going to build that silt trap a bit higher because it did overflow about four years ago. And I'm working that up. Yeah, they've worked out the others have run away, so they're catching up. <laughs> Where you go, girls? Nah. Come on, tomatoes, catch up. And of course, there's the community. When you get to a new town, uh, the first thing you have to do is make yourself known to everybody and they wait they stand back they stand back and wait for you to make the first move so you need to do it and you need to do it fairly quickly if you don't make the first move there's the um, heritage listed railway house this is the old railway reserve here we built a shed on it community shed there's the pub that was built in 1906 when the town was gazetted we've got the roadhouse which no longer sells fuel um, but you can get a good meal there and uh, you can buy a fuel with a credit card just out of town. Uh, the old post office down there, which is now closed, that's a private residence. We've got the heritage listed railway station. Uh, lovely little toilet blocks there, hot showers for the truckies coming through. Uh, memorial gardens, children's playgrounds, very well equipped. And we've got the main drag of town. Uh, we have a post office, we have a um, hair store, we've got a little grocery store and a garage and a hardware a few little things like that so it's about 200 people in town 
out of the 900 that are in the whole Shire. When you get to town, join the clubs, get to know everybody, and you'll be very welcome. But if you stand back, you do nothing, and you or you wait too long, they'll wipe you off. So just be very careful with that. And of course, in Darken, we've got all the community resources. There's a resource centre down at the end, which incorporates a medical centre and a couple of big meeting halls. We've got the old road board building, which is now a museum. And we've got the Shire Council. And up the road, we've got the main hall, and we've got the original hall, which is now a weight training centre. So this is the main street, Burrow Street in Darken. And here we have the hardware. The Darken garage built way, way back. And then the bakery and then a couple of modern stores. When I came to Darken in 1972, we had 11 teachers. Two of them were married couples. Seven of them were single. Four of them married within the Shire. And this is the Darken school. Uh, the little building down at the end here was the original schoolhouse. And as you can see, it's got a lot larger. It was a district high school with 256 children when I was here. My room is right down at the far end there. And that was a metalwork woodwork shop. Now it's a preschool. If you bring children into a little country town, that's another thing that they'll make you very welcome because very, very often schools are struggling for numbers. This is now K-6 and has 96 children. And of course this is where all the activity activities happening on a Saturday morning. We've got the, the bowling greens, we've got, got the basketball and the netball courts, uh, we've got the sports club, we've got all the golf course and that's got sand scrape greens and of course the footy ground. Football and cricket, very popular here. Um, we've got the four posts at the end. Our goal is six points and a point at the sides. If you hit a post it's either a point or out on the full. Uh, this is the centre on the weekends. On Sunday morning you'll find all the men and the women out playing bowls. Of course the last thing I want to talk to you about is the dead centre of Darken. If you love the town so much and you never want to leave uh, the plots are very cheap, they don't recycle them like they do in the cities and you can be there with all your friends. My wife and I have discussed this, we'll probably be buying a plot shortly but we don't plan to be in there for a long, long time. Now remember, there's one last thing, people living in Darken are not allowed to be buried here, they have to wait until they die. Okay, hope this is very useful to you and you found some information that you could use for when you're buying your farm and maybe even when you're buying your little plot. Have a nice day.